put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. In 2011, Movie Review. American paleontologist Kate Lloyd joins a part Danish, part Norwegian team of researchers in the Antarctic. She is called there to help investigate something they found in the ice, which seems to be extraterrestrial in origin. And that is really about what I should give away. So, this making a prequel to an established classic is fighting a losing battle. You're gonna change so much that you, you know, make it a new story, make it interesting, and alienate the fans, or you're gonna stick so close that it completely feels like a retread. And, yeah, this one is no exception, which of course doesn't mean that there can't be interesting elements to it. As usual, I will try to get to talk about all the positives before I get into the negatives. But I suppose if you want a preview of the negatives, sort of, sort of summing up the movie in just a few words, just don't bother. Really, there's there's not enough good here to make it worth watching. You're not going to like it if you like the 82 version. Even if you don't like the 82 version. If you watch the 82 version, version you're probably not going to like this movie. If you haven't watched the 82 version, what is wrong with you? And watch that instead. Now, the positives. Where the 81... The 80s version had an all-male cast. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. This one does opt for not quite an all-male cast, bringing in just one female. And what they do here, which they do perfectly right, and apparently this was actually Mary Elizabeth Winstead's contribution. She demanded that her character not be sexualized. And they, they stuck with that. There is nothing about Kate Lloyd's character that demands that it be a woman. It could have been a man, but it happens to be a woman. And this is really how you should do that sort of thing. That's also how they... That was the case with Ellen Ripley in the original, I'm pretty sure, in the original Alien. Yeah, every character in Alien was actually written that it could be either a man or a woman, depending on what the filmmakers wanted to do. The, the script does not specify gender. And that's how you should do it. You shouldn't have just, you know, characters that are entirely dictated by the gender they happen to be. And so there is no flirting, there is no love interest, none of that. And she is not seen as weaker because she's a woman. There's just none of that. And I applaud that. However, just one negative, and then I'll return to the good, I swear. This does also mean, you might have noticed that I mentioned her specifically. She's very clearly the lead, and the, uh, the 80s version did not really have lead.
lead characters, it had an ensemble cast. You could not point at someone and say, they're going to make it out. Excuse me. Or, if, if you did, you were just as likely to be wrong as right. And with this, it just... Yeah, that automatically takes away a lot of the... inherent quality, positive quality of the 80s version. Now, this was actually made by people who give a crap about the 80s version. They went to a painstaking amount of effort recreating the Norwegian camp scene in the 80s version. I'm not going to spoil anything. And It's really sad that that doesn't count for more than it does because at the end of the day they're, they're really just trying to mimic that movie, which is quite ironic when you think about it, and that's kind of that, that's it. That, that doesn't... You, you can't just copy something and think that you've got the right quality. You have to actually understand why the original was good. And while this was made by people who care about the original and like it a lot, maybe even love it, they don't seem to understand why it was good. I'm, I just keep slipping into the negatives. Let's see. Positives. They actually do have Norwegians in this movie. And at least one Dane. Ulay Thompson, although he has been breaking into the international scene more, but what's really impressive, they do actually have Norwegians in this movie, and they're speaking Norwegian, there's, Ulay Thompson speaks Danish in this movie, I don't know why they don't exploit that more, since it's a film of supposed paranoia, and the language barrier, as Link Hara pointed out in a recent The Thing-themed video is a really good way to yeah keep keep people from being able to you know communication barriers can really inspire a lot of paranoia you can you really trust them they're they're talking you you can't properly converse with them and yeah just the effects are not positive either. The score is again fairly similar. It's again mimicry. It does have tension. I will give it that. There is definitely some some points where you're really getting into it. Positives it does actually start out pretty promising. The first 25 minutes or so are promising. The... Yeah, I suppose I just have to break right into the negatives. This really doesn't particularly have atmosphere to it. It tries to, but it's much too twist-happy. It's not the good kind of twist. It's not... A plot twist is a narrative tool, and any tool has a right application and a right proportion of application. You can overdo it and you can do it wrong. This one overdoes it and does it wrong. It's not... <laughs> the twists, they're these post-2000 kinds of twists. The twists, the, the, the gotcha kind of twists, where they make it seem like they, they're doing a lot of build-up to this big reveal and you, you're sitting there feeling good about yourself because you, you know what's you know who the killer is, or you know something, and then 
gotcha, it was actually the person you thought was the victim was really the killer, that kind of twist. It's really lame. There is nothing to it. It's just simple misdirection. Maybe it takes a little skill to be able to do it, but it's not an interesting twist. It's just the kind of twist where they enjoy tricking you, and that's not interesting. The pace is not terribly good. It feels like, I don't know, it, it kind of starts and stops. And there are a lot of these little situations where some of the situations are maybe even fairly interesting, but then there are a lot that just aren't. A lot of it is the dialogue and the characterization. The dialogue is the dumb kind of dialogue, the repetitive, Hollywood kind of dialogue. You have like big declarative statements, this is our only hope! The, the kind of way that people never actually talk. And just really repetitive where they... Yes, ironically, I, I realize I already used the word repetitive. Where they're just saying the basic same thing over and over as if to remind the audience, or at least the ones with ADHD. And there's also really, it, it doesn't know when to have the character shut up. It forgets that it's show don't tell with, the film is a visual medium. And there's this fairly early scene where someone is, I shouldn't really give away, I'll just say they're, they're doing something. And yeah, two, two or three characters are doing something. and. Over and over, for like a minute, they keep saying, they, they say two or three times, we're going to do this, we're going to do it now. And then they're doing it, and then they're, they're still saying, we're, we're going to do this now. And it's just so boring. If they were just showing us, that they, if, if they said once that they were going to do it, or if even better, if they just showed us that they were going to do it, and then showed, I get what they're doing, they're trying to build tension. But it doesn't work, because it's not interesting to over and over listen. You're, you're, rather than being the magician who is, like, making people really anticipating something, you're actually being the magician who shows that the, the hat that he's going to pull the rabbit out of is, it, it, he's, you're drawing too much attention to the wrong thing. My, my metaphor is crumbling as I speak, so I'm going to abandon it completely. Where the 80s version was an atypical horror movie, better than horror movies usually are, this is a typical horror movie where people make bad decisions as opposed to smart ones. Again, the first 25 minutes, after that, People start splitting up. I'm, I'm pretty sure they were grouping together just so they could split up. Now, the, the monster designs, there is one inspired idea. I wish they didn't do it over and over. And that's about it. There's... It's, it's not very interesting, and it's way over CGI'd. It's... Apparently they did use practical effects, but they would enhance with CG. All I see is the enhancement, supposed enhancement, and as high quality as the CG is, it's not convincing. I'm always just looking at CGI. I'm looking at people, and I'm looking at CGI that is supposedly attacking them. It's again, like I said, CGI also is a tool, and you apply it correctly. You can't just throw in CGI and say, well, that's it. You still have to properly build up, and this shows the creatures far too much. 
this for some reason has actual antagonists, as in not just the the monster. I I don't even know how you come up with an idea like that. I don't know who looks at the '80s version and say, you know, if we did another version of that, we should really have human antagonists. Here's what I get. I get doing the paranoia thing. I get pitting people against each other and having people accuse each other and really making making you wonder who can you trust. But this is not how you do it. This... The 80s version has several red herrings and they work extremely well. This one... I don't know, overexposes the red herrings or something. It. It's again the, the gotcha kind of twist, where you keep thinking that something's going to be one way and that it's another way, and yeah, there are, just, there are several characters in this that you don't, that you never really think of as potentially good guys. You're just, well, those are, you know, even before you think that there's going to be anything attacking anyone. You're like, well, those are the bad guys. And actually, all of the characters are really, really forgettable. In the 80s one, whenever someone would die, I'd be like, oh no, not in sort of character name here. In this, it was more like, oh, what was his name again? I'm already forgetting the movie, and I'm only... I started this video within 10 minutes of the movie ending, and it's only, it's 94 minutes, not counting the end credits, but it's just so forgettable. It, it really does try to copy the, the stuff that everyone remembers from the 80s version, but again, it just doesn't understand. A lot of it was the characters. And then the, the atypical horror aspects. And the ambiguity. This one... Actually, I suppose there is a little ambiguity. But it does also explain away. It explains some things that were mysteries in the old one. Thankfully, not everything. It is not as bad as I feared. That I will say. The humor can really work, especially again in those first 25 minutes, well, really, the the biggest really funny moment is the very start of it. It's, it's got a really Scandinavian joke told by one of the Norwegians. But after that, there's really not a lot, and yeah, you, you don't relate to these people. And it, it doesn't really have to do with it's not the acting don't don't be fooled by the fact that this doesn't particularly have names in it these are pretty good actors i would say it's the material they're given it's the repetitive it's it's the dialogue in general it's the fact that they don't really have that much interesting character and then there's again the fact that we have a clear lead character, so basically everything is how do the others relate to her? It's not how do these people relate to each other. And it's also a bit... The characterization, or, or the introductions to the various characters, is more stiff and obvious in this one. In the 80s version, you can't really say... Or, the characters are basically introduced pretty much immediately, and over the course of the film you learn what they... what type of people they are. Their names, you pick them up from them addressing each other in a completely natural manner. It's, it's, like, it's like with Alien. You don't feel like you're you don't feel like you're seeing something that's staged. You feel like you're seeing something that is just happening. You are 
witnessing a small slice of life for these people and that's it. It feels very natural. This one, the introduction of the of, of Kate, they actually talk about it. They seem to think the the director and I think it's the producer. I don't remember exactly, but the, the the director definitely was talking about how it's more relatable that way. You know, you have this character who, because we see her being recruited, she does not start out and at Antarctica. So she she gets the choice to go to Antarctica, whereas for the, the guys in the 80s version, it was like a, that was what they had chosen, and they had been there for a while. And they felt like that was dif more difficult to relate to. I wholeheartedly disagree. Anyway, with having, excuse me, with introducing her, she comes into the group that already exists, and she is our proxy. We are introduced to the characters via her meeting them. It's literally like they go into a room, point to the different characters and say, this is, insert name here, he does that, this is, that, eh, does that. And it's just really, really obvious. It doesn't feel natural at all. The, the creature itself does not behave in the same way as we saw it do in the 80s version. I'm not going to give any details here, obviously spoilery. I will go into it in the spoiler video, but just so you know, if you're just going to watch the video, going to watch the movie, that's something to expect. Consider yourself warned. Now, another problem with this being a prequel is that we already know what the creature is from having seen the 80s version. And this is not, this movie, you don't need to have watched the 80s version, but it does kind of lend itself to watching this and then that, or watching that and then this. You, there are several things that we know from the 80s version that you see more about in this one, and trust me, they're pretty much all disappointing. Anyway, one problem with this being a prequel and it being the same creature, is that we know more as the audience than the characters do. And it's it's not very really interesting to watch them figure out the mystery that we already know the answer to. And the movie doesn't keep to that tight of a pace either. It starts out fairly slow, much slower than the 80s one. And I'm, that's fine, basically, but again, it's a prequel, and the audience already knows what's going on. And that just makes it less... I, I would say that if we learned more about the creature, then it'd be less pointless to have all this waiting, but I don't think that the mystery should be taken away. And again, to, be, to its credit, the film does not do very much of that. A lot of the 80s one is repeated here, they do it in slightly different ways, but it really feels like... I don't remember the name, but one of the reviewers, one professional reviewer, described it as this movie being in lust with the 80s one. Yeah. That really describes it well. It, it's redoing all these things, and it's less skillfully done, we've seen it before, and to be frank, it tends to be a dumber way of doing it, a more Hollywood, teenage-friendly way of doing it. Now...
I suppose I should say about the effects, they are done partially, at least, by Tom Woodruff Jr., I believe is the name, who plays the alien in the new, you know, Alien vs. Predator movies, and does a lot of special effects work for the AVP movies and such. And, yeah, it, it is decently enough that the stuff that doesn't look overly CG'd is pretty decent. It's, again, just mainly the lack of interesting designs. It, it feels like, again, they're kind of... They, they choose to be shackled by the 80s version and just doing that over again, and they're just kind of doing that with newer technology. Note I said newer, not better. The practical effects of the 80s one look far superior to anything in this. I suppose that pretty much covers it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.